So, I've wanted to dive a little deeper with SwiftUI recently, so I thought I'd set up a little project about authentication. This is a kind of tutorial and what I found. So here's the app that I'm going to talk us through. Um, I've already put in the username and password here. When I click login, it comes up with a little spinner and it takes us to another page. And if we put an incorrect username and password in, it puts a spinner and remains on this screen. So I'm going to talk you through the SwiftUI code and how I might set up authentication. So let's go through the not so interesting pieces first. I'm going to use my network manager so it's a separate network manager which is tested and just makes those URL requests nothing too interesting. Um, have a view model which is login view model and injects the network manager and we have the login view which uses the view model. So we get back a token and I'm using a public API which is this regris.in and it just has a login API which works fine for this. So it's not a real token but it gives you an idea of how you might use it if you were using a real token. So the view model is where we make that network request and we'd send a username and password. So for each of these I've made them published and I've made the view model an observable object so the view can react to it. So the username and the password are just strings so the login, the default login for that, um, a, that endpoint is this username and this password. So we have a binding between the username and password and kind of the, the text field in the view. And we have these two booleans. So we have a loading state and a login state. So when we try to log in, we send the username an email and we start our loading state, which will just be having a spinner. And if it comes back and we can log in, then we log in and that moves us to the next screen. If not, well, we stop loading and give the user a chance to enter in a new username and password. There's a good potential here to deal with error cases and have some sort of error state. I've not done that in this example to keep it simple. That menu view is just kind of a hello world view, which we see when we log in. So kind of the interesting part is the login view. So we have to have the view model as an observed object. So when there are changes, then the view updates. I've used the navigation view. And for fun, I made a background view, which is just down here. And it's just a gradient to try to make the app look slightly more interesting. So if we're loading, we set up a spinner. And it's obviously in the z-index, it's in advance of the background view, which is right at the back on the z-index of zero. And we have this login text as a separate view, which just says login, nice and simple. And we have a text field username, which is then bound to our view model username. So when this changes, it will change in the view model. Password is effectively the same. And we have a button and when you press that button it goes away and it makes that network call and if the view models boolean login is set to true then we navigate to this menu view and this seems to work fine i haven't taken the opportunity within this code to have any validation and that validation i think would be best placed in the view model so the login view should have everything about the view, the interface, but no logic. The view model, we could, every time we try to make the login network call, do some val validation on the email first and check that it's a properly formatted email. So that's something to think about where you could actually make this better. Along with the error case, you could make it a better authentication system. In any case, uh, I think you should download this code from the GitHub account and I'll put the link in the description so then you can take a look yourself and see how this works. 
So there was plenty of scope there to think about bindings, about how SwiftUI works, and error handling is a nice extension part we can think about and how to make a great error state. And I think this might be a type of approach I'll take if I was using SwiftUI in a larger project. Anyway, hope this video has helped you.